Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. Now we got a different perspective going on. Usually you don't get to see the Bismarck and the hood in the case. Well, now this morning you can. But you don't get to look out the windows. I guess I could have put my fisheye lens on and would have shown everything. Uh, but I didn't. Now, what is with the different perspective? Why are we looking at the Bismarck? Well, uh, probably about an hour ago, I got a, a, a comment from a viewer named Bob. And Bob wanted to know how, what are the dimensions of the Bismarck? Because he's building it right now. And I said, well, maybe, uh, I, said, I forget exactly what I said, but it was something like, well, there's other people right now that are doing the Bismarck, and maybe it'll be easier for them to measure it, because, because it's hard for me to get that plexiglass front off of my case. Now, I, I didn't say it exactly like that, but it was to that effect. And so, if there is anybody that is doing the Bismarck right now, and maybe it's sitting out on your model table, and you've got the mast on, it'd be a lot easier for you to measure the, how high it is to the top of the mast from the bottom of the keel. Because Bob wants to make a case for his. So, okay, now, there you go. Bob, I asked. We'll see what happens in the comments uh, in, in today's video. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Now, as as for our sunrise this morning, well, we did we did get to see it. It was a little better. Nothing spectacular because there was no clouds involved. Got to have clouds to have a nice sunrise, but not too many clouds. <laughs> it's got to be just right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, oh, wait, and I did. We are going to have a rollback. It would. For a while there, it looked like we were going to have three days in a row with no rollback. But I, I did uh, come back to the model table uh, and do about, I'm guessing, uh, eight, ten minutes of videoing last night. Uh, we, we did work on, on some little parts here, which you will see in the rollback. Uh, I, I think it's time for me to stop uh, flapping my lips here and uh, let's roll back. I don't know how much of uh, a rollback we're going to be doing here because it's getting pretty late. But I guess anything is better than nothing. I wouldn't want to have three days in a row where there was no rollback. No, we need F37. So probably about five minutes ago I dug out the F spruce. There's two of them. And I can't find 37 on either one of them. And then I, I noticed that loose in the bag it is this part right here, and it's got the 37s on it. And uh, uh, it looks like we we must have used them off of one of them because they're both gone here. But we only need two 37s, and and here they are. Uh, these are uh, little louvered vents of some kind, and if you will recall, I don't know where it was somewhere, somewhere on the uh, superstructure here. I've got the vents glued on the side and there <laughs> I got them upside down I, I think they were somewhere over here on the bridge but I'm not sure yeah I guess it doesn't really matter if I can't even find them when I'm looking for them then no one's going to notice right anyway I, I will do my best to get these up the right side up um, yeah I got a few comments over that okay let's uh, let's get these okay we've got them here and, uh, all right, I, I can see now by the way the shadow is falling that, uh, I'm going to get this one turned around here if I can, kind of digging into the microfiber green cloth here. Um, that's the problem with, with, uh, microfiber. It's, it's, uh, it's like a hook and loop type thing for, for like Velcro. It's like the hook part. Um, on the it's very small, of course. Now, I, I do believe that I have them right. In other words, this would be the bottom, and this would be the top. At least that's what it looks like to me. Um, the uh, the louvers seem to be 
they, they would shed they would shed the rain that would come down like this at least uh, now maybe I've got it backwards but I don't think so and I thought I'd better take a closer look because I, I just glanced at the at the manual a moment ago and uh, and it looks like this larger flat area is at the top now um no no it, it must be the way it looks in the in the drawing because yeah I, I can clearly see that these louvers are are shaped so that they would shed water in this direction and they would catch it if it came this way so so they they've got to go they've got to go like this okay Okay, and we need one L13 here. And there is only one L sprue. So, uh, let's turn this over here. There we go. Now, which way would be right for that? You can see that the water would shed better if it was flowing this way, and it would catch if it was flowing this way. So, so the larger flat area, if you if I hold it like this, you can see that the ends are different, and yet in the drawing, it looks like this should be at the top. But I think it's just a, an optical illusion. I think it's just the way it's, it's drawn. Late in the afternoon yesterday, I was noticing there was a little bird at our bird feeder, and it was just sort of not uh, pecking at the seeds like usual. And uh, I, I, I was noticing that there weren't very many seeds there, and, uh, you know, it was getting kind of low, in other words, and yet there were seeds in the tray, so I was wondering what the problem was. Uh, anyway, I thought I'd better get out there and replenish the uh, bird feeder, which I did. Now, a little later, that same bird did come back. And uh, now you're asking me, how do I know it was the same bird? Because, uh, uh, you know, sparrows, they kind of all look alike, right? Uh, well, this one is, is sort of had the same demeanor as the one that was there before, and so I'm assuming it was the same one. Anyway, it uh, it found some seeds, and uh, we're good to go now for another few days, but those seeds are really going down fast. Now, I might actually get to paint these yet this evening. Now, don't go pushing down too hard with your tweezers because you're going to deform the, the louvers. Just, just want to make sure they're not going to, you know, come off of that sticky tape there. Okay, I want these to contrast against the side of the bulkhead. The bulkhead is 66, so we're going to use the darker 77. There's not a huge difference between the 66 and 77 unless you see them side by side And I'm going to just try and put on a thin coat here this evening Not a whole lot. I don't want to uh, You know, I don't want to flood that area. I Just want to get the first coat on here And then tomorrow morning early, when I get up. And I do get up. What I do is I open my eyes in the morning, and if I don't see flowers and smell candles burning, I get up. Okay. Now you just know that I'm going to pause here and put on the macro lens, right? You're used to me now. Okay, now to you, that's been a all the same scene, but actually it's not. It took me about five minutes to reset up here. My 
once again I'm just going to do one coat it's almost like an undercoat it's a little bit light right there and I realize that I don't I don't want to fill up those louvers maybe I'll get rid of the excess here just kind of very carefully trying to absorb some of that on the brush that should be okay that's probably going to dry uh, quite good this one here has had about five minutes or so already I could almost give it a second coat but I'm going to wait for the morning okay well I guess that's a good way to quit right now we'll, we'll see you in the morning yeah Well, it is morning, and after I had said, we'll see you in the morning, well, I cleaned up my paintbrush, and I got all ready to shut everything down here, and then I looked over at what I had done, and here I had not done the L13. Well, back out comes the paintbrush and the paint, and yeah, got our L13 painted now. Probably some of you may have even noticed that. And then I was noticing that I did a rather poor job on the sides. There was there was little places on the sides where the first coat on the 37s here didn't didn't get put on very good. So I, I I fixed that up too. I'm sure some of you noticed that as well. Anyway, we are good to go here for the second coat. And uh, I will put on the macro lens here in a minute and uh We'll, we'll move in nice and close and we'll, uh, you'll be able to see how well the, the first coat, uh, sh I, I use the phrase sh shrink wrap, but that might not be the proper uh, term to use in painting. I'm, I'm not a painter, obviously. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously you're not a painter, Ron. If you were, you'd be using an airbrush. Oh, you weren't going to say that anymore. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's put on the macro leads and uh, zoom in on these and uh, just take a look and you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised at how, how well it came out. Uh, and that's just the first coat. Now we've got the 13 on the rotator here, so we may as well just use that. Make sure we get the edges this time. It's a little heavy there. In fact, it's, it's quite heavy. This uh, paint is kind of thinned out on me here. And uh, try and absorb some of that excess. Story of my life here. Now, I don't want to be scrubbing on it because then I'm going to end up removing last night's uh, first coat. That is one of the downfalls, I guess you might say, of this particular paint. Okay, let's not poke at it anymore. Okay, and this time, let's not saturate so much on the brush. Let's get a little bit off of there. And we'll get right along the edge right along the edge now this is just the second coat it doesn't have to be it just sort of has to help and I think that did I think that did looks like bubbles there in that oh you know what that's uh, what I'm looking at there is probably uh, in that in this one. Oh, I think I rubbed some of the original paint off. Okay, sample a tiny bit more here, and pull the edge.
Okay, let's just let's just leave that. I, I think that that's probably going to be okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Now I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, but but back when I was uh, building the Titanic in Lusitania, uh, back in the in the uh, 80s, <clears throat> I guess it'd be mid 80s, early 80s, something like that. Uh, I was using those humbral enamels, the ones that uh, UK Jason was uh, demonstrating the other day. And uh, I did, uh, even though I had enamel thinner, I was not using it as a thinner, I was using it as a paintbrush cleaner. <laughs> now, just one the reason I'm mentioning that is because uh, I just wanted you to know that the, the paint that I'm using right now it is thinned out. It's probably thinned out 30, 30%. I can't remember, but it's, it's quite thinned out. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting better, folks. I'm getting better. Okay. I want to get all the parts we need first before we start placing stuff. And uh, for the photo etch, we need uh, two of each one of these, the D3, the D4, and uh, D2. <clears throat> For a minute there I thought this was all one, one piece, but it's a case of this is straight, this is straight, and this D4 gets bent. Okay, now it's making sense here. Uh, I guess it'll make a lot more sense when it comes to, you know, dropping it down on the, on the ship. And we do the same thing on both sides, only this, this would be bent mirror image, obviously. Um, okay. We've got everything else, I believe. We've got all our life rafts made. We've got the, uh, L13 and the 237s made, uh, and ready to go. I do believe that there is only the photo etch left for step 42 right now. Okay, I, I realized afterwards that I'd forgotten about these little boxes here that we have to drop down. Uh, it doesn't say both sides, so I'm going to assume that when we turn the page and probably look at the other side of this uh, module, uh, we're going to be doing the same thing on the other side. It only makes sense. That's usually the way this these builds go. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to let you know uh, I did finally remember. I wonder what else I've forgotten on this step. But I, now, I do now believe that once we nip off our six pieces of photo etch, uh, we will have everything for for step 42. Why is that so important? Okay, Here's our uh, D2, 3, and 4, and I've already got these two tabs here. The reason being is because in order to do them on camera, I have to sort of swing around and come at an awkward angle. And um, my dexterity and awkward can't be used in the same sentence, if you know what I mean. So uh, I think the rest of these, though, I can get fairly, fairly easily if I'm careful and don't try to talk while I'm doing it. Whoop. They're not making the popping sound that they usually do. Let's see if I got that one right. There. I could feel it. I actually felt it go. Oh, here we go. Well, we may as well get that while we got it. Oh, heard that one. Yeah, that sounds more normal, doesn't it? These will bend out of shape real easy. If I catch a corner and then lift up. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, here we are with our D4s. And uh, you can see the uh, folding line here where we have to bend these between the two stanchions. And, and it's going to go at a bit of a right angle jog here. It looks like 90 degrees. Uh, now I, I did look on the uh, uh, on, on the uh, ship on the on the ship module, and uh, I saw where it has to go, and it makes perfect sense. So um, I, I think I could probably use the Tamiya folding pliers, photo etch pliers for for these bends, but I, I think it'd be safer maybe if we put it in Andy's bender. Um, at least that's my thinking on that. I'll, I'll try one in the bender, and if it doesn't seem to work out, then I'll do it in the in the plier. In the meantime, I'll, I'll show you where on the module this is supposed to actually go. Makes perfect sense once you know. Okay, it is a railing that's going to go long like here, take a bit of a jog, and then go here. And then there will be a ladder that's going to go down here to the main deck. Then the, the longer straight piece that we cut goes right here. The little straight piece that we cut, I'll show you where, where it goes. Right there. Now I was just noticing that's where we put in that, uh, that gun barrel to fill up the crack. So it'll be interesting now to see if I'm going to have a problem. Yeah, that will be interesting. Okay, stuff has been happening here this morning. Well, I guess this afternoon now. But a little while ago, a neighbor comes over and drops off some fresh tomatoes from their garden. Now I can do one of two things here. I can either get out the pressure cooker and I can can them, or I can put them in freezer bags and freeze them. Now last winter I had pretty good luck just freezing uh, tomatoes. Uh, now I know when you take them out of the freezer and they thaw out they just sort of turn to mush. But the taste is the same. And I think probably the nu nutrition is the same. So uh, yeah, I think I'll just freeze these. But that's not all I have to do this afternoon. You know what day it is tomorrow. That's right. Okay. Well, I got to make our triple decker pizza. Whether I'm going to actually do it, and if I video it or not, I don't know. Uh, but we'll see what happens here. It might be part of tomorrow's rollback. Uh, however, I'm going to wind it up here for today's episode. And uh, maybe I'll come at this again this evening. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching, everybody. All being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs>